Shall we get down to it? And away we go. Question or recap? Uh, let's do a question. All right. What is the scariest thing you've done? Now, this could technically be something that you can make up that happened before the start of the campaign, but I feel like there's enough stuff in the campaign to fill it. Uh, the escape from Maladraxus. Perfect. Could you repeat that one more time? What is the scariest thing that you've ever done? I'm just remembering us running through his lair and him fucking mm-hmm. jumping out of the walls mm-hmm. at us. I would have to say the fight with Bandrak, the first one kind of was mm-hmm. obviously, but probably the second just because how how close it was. Mm-hmm. Okay. I'm not sure if it was a fight per se, but the the part where we were trying to escape that weird ghost thing that was attacking us when we were underwater that was summoned by oh, yeah. the Abolith. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it doesn't have to be a fight, it's just a thing. Yeah, that's, that's yeah whatever happening. that thing was, I'm mm-hmm. pretty sure Fergus was probably terrified of that thing. He's like, we literally can't fight it. We can't do anything but run. Mm-hmm. So, fuck that. In the... Uh... Whirlpool ride into Maladraxus's lair was particularly not scary. So <laughs> <laughs> that's right, because you almost went overboard twice. <laughs> Thrums over there like I'm not scared of anything. Uh, well, telling his third wife that he. They were going to have to break up. <laughs> Don't act like he broke up with any of these women. <laughs> but it's also a toss-up between the third and four. Listen, she had cancer and it was her birthday. No, he was just terrified of her. Ah, uh, yes, Suster. Is uh, that your actual answer there, Throm? Yes. Okay. Because Doctor Seuss cheated on his wife. Okay, before the campaign is done, one of his ex-wives needs <laughs> to show up. I'm just saying. At like the very end of the campaign, we're all celebrating. His wife show up for alimony. <laughs> this is an egalitarian society. Why do we still have alimony? All right. So, last time on Dragon Ball Z, uh, you guys returned to Dammer Hall, spent a lot of time preparing for war against the Orcish Menace. Um, at the beginning of that time, Nolgram, uh clapped eyes on some of the ruined remains of those Quicksilver golems that the Drow had sent into the territory discover the grisly secret of their construction and that someone was aping Freya's designs. After a lot of administrative control over Dammer Hall, you guys had marshaled a new army set forth to pursue the orcs who were rounding back around to uh, attack one of your mining operations. Along the way, you ended up doing battle with that group of Quicksilver Golems. You took a few army casualties, but you guys were able to take the brunt of the forces yourself and discover the strength of their design. After the battle, you found a scroll case that contained blueprints for the Golem and a magic two-way gem that allowed a holographic projection between you and the creators of the Golem, a drow artificer by the name of Vadian Vakazar, who complimented Freya on giving him the idea for the design of the golems and said how his queen had 
commanded him to aid Maladra uh, not Maladrax, Encephalon. I'm getting my dragon names mixed up now. I blame Richard. Uh, Listen, they're dragons number one and two, and that's all they'll ever be. <laughs> Red and blue. Uh, that is the bulk of it in the brief of what happened last time. So, let me move you guys around. <laughs> so, we rejoin you guys. As you are marshalling your forces post the battle with the golems, uh, who is going to be marching with the army? Because there was some talk if some people were going to go back to Damerhall or not. Um, I believe. Yeah, I'm with Norbert the army. Going to be marching. Mm -hmm. Also, I think we're. I I think I'm with I army so. number one, the first army. And Logan, yeah. weren't you with the second army? Uh, I believe you guys uh, have met up by now because where first army is <clears throat> is where you. Uh... Okay. Oh yeah, because yeah. we fought. Mm -hmm. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. And I was coming up with third army, right? Mm -hmm. You can always uh, over here click on these little helmet tokens, and you can add your own little token on it if you want to ever keep it straight. Mm. Got it. Yeah, I think at this point we're playing on swapping units and all that. Um, can't remember how we were planning dividing it. Um, I know we I were, we're going to have the to everyone together. Um, we were going to split off and have t like one army go up this way, and the other army go this way to kind of trap them inward. To try to um, deal with the army that's been left over as the orc army is attacking mm. our jet mine area. <clears throat> yeah. So I believe we were going to have the fast moving units um, on the first army, like the mounted ones and my um, iron cloaks. Mm -hmm. And we were going to have um, the slower, um, like mortars and archers and stuff, go up from the south because mm -hmm. it's more narrow. Right. But we could also ha divide it a little bit because I don't think it's really going to affect their movement speed per se. We already established that because they're going through narrow quarters. We can't exactly full mount everything. Uh, I okay. think that was only the, the, the sloops were the only thing that couldn't move at normal speed in the tunnels, I believe. Yeah, because it was low. They would have to be yeah. carried along. If you fought them in open caverns, they'd be fine. Yeah. I know we were going to leave at least a defender or two in Forge Sworn's territory. Yeah. Yeah, I think, uh, like, yeah, one of the defender units, the Dwarven defenders. So we can put the third um, army being the um, Forge Sworn area? Mm hmm So. We had to do it in Dammer Hall, but we can... I, I think you should probably take the sloops with you just because there's more open space than what you're going than the yeah that yeah because you'll be able to get to open sky here and here um clerics one in each team i believe should be good yeah yeah i agree with that um an arch a core ruler with the mounted ones just so we have it a little divided mm. i think the centurion should stay with the other centurion since we'll be going against their hard uh Oh, I guess there's no fortress there anymore, but I mm -hmm. think their line attack will probably work better in tunnels than open space. Since there's going to be more movement in this fight, should we leave the runic mortars, or should we still try to move them in? Because we could always leave them with the defenders if we need to. Or we could also leave that wounded um, quarreler. Mm. Just in case. Uh, I, I want to yeah, bring the hammer no. elite, so we could do like this. I think, I think it'll be good to have the mortar stay 
with that unit just because if we get a point where we're just kind of defending defending we could still pepper fire gotcha so like this like leave, leave these two in um forge Warren's area a first army that's going through the northern um yeah. path and then second army is going through the southern path of helm and guard territory yep that sounds good to me <laughs> Okay, but who is going with the Argus? Ah, yeah, I'll go. <laughs> nope, that's a fair question. No room here. Sorry, we, we got a little lost. In the <laughs> yeah, there. no problem. I was letting you guys finish your strategy session. That's no problem at all. <laughs> <laughs> we also have Dammer Hall up there that people can mark for if they're staying in Dammer Hall. Mm-hmm. Was the plan still for me to stay there in case... I feel no, like we should have at least something. one person staying behind. Okay, I can stay. Okay. I didn't want to, like, force somebody to volunteer, so. Mm -hmm. What about the older generation? What they napping? Probably. They yeah. do that. I want them always stoned. <laughs> oh, that was bad. I mean, <laughs> maps are fantastic. I might say that joke had a rocky reception. <laughs> mm. I give it okay. one out of two boulders. Yeah, it was a stone cold reception no. for sure. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I'll go with the not fast party. Um, well, second army. Yeah, it's third combining into. Well, I heard all of you. Th third's staying behind, yeah, can, unfortunately, so go to defend. Second. Yeah. <clears throat> all right. So, yes, he's going with second army then. Would you like me to go with you, Fergus? Because right now it's you alone with the three of us separate. I mean, it's up to you. I'm fine with just going solo with the fast party. I, I think Norgro will want to stay by your side just to make sure all is well. At least one <laughs> super high level bodyguard. I mean, what could happen? What's the worst army? that could happen? Mm -hmm. You just said I that. totally have I totally have no heirs or anything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if I die, mm -hmm. succession crisis on a mm -hmm. massive scale. Mm -hmm. So yeah, and, and no, <laughs> no longer allowed to be the king anymore. So so mm -hmm. fuck. I do believe that that happened. Thrum would just drop his gear and walk away. <laughs> <laughs> Wait for the octopus dragon to end the world. Yep. Yep. I'm out, man. We had our chance with Milgram. You guys blew it. Taking my ball and going home. All right. So, you guys can move four spaces, not diagonal, uh, per week of army movement here. So we can start knocking some of this out. Okay, so well, since we were kind of repositioning the second and first... yeah, they're they're technically in the same spot, but it's easier. okay. So if I'm just like tracking mm -hmm. movement, because if the second army was there too, one, two, three, four for the second army, one, two, three, four for the first army. Mm -hmm. And um, since we're dividing the way we did, we'll probably hand the um, journal entry thing to um, mm -hmm. Taskill so we can coordinate our strikes so we both armies emerge around the same time. Because otherwise it would probably be hard to, um, hard to plan that. Mm -hmm. So 
So Taskle's the one getting the you up um, texts. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I've moved the orcs accordingly, so you guys can move your troops again now. Third army is just going to sit right here. Is that right? Four. Yeah. Kind of in the fort two, on that outlier. Yep. Four. It looks like we're honestly going to get to the um, Helmingard territory at the same time for both armies. Mm. So, works out. Cool. Just how we planned it. <laughs> Go. Oh, right next down, that's why. All right. Pillaging is happening out near the gem mine, so I'm going to increase population stress by one step. Uh, but then. You guys get to move again. Yep. So I believe four or three will bring us there and there. So mm -hmm. I believe that would be the time for war were declared. Uh, well, is first army able to, sit, to support? Do we want to hold off on second? I army feel like we should wait, second army. I feel like we should just go in with our guns ablaze, so we can eliminate them before they get backups back from the other territory. Because the whole point yeah, is we want to get rid of the okay. orc army mm -hmm. that's um, okay. camped here mm -hmm. because there's one that's currently yeah. assaulting Hall Forge. Mm -hmm. so let's wait a so, day so that we can attack at the same time. Yeah, I, I think we both arrive at the same time basically with the movement the way it works. So with the with the journals we have, we can basically time it where we both arrive and march at the same time. Yeah, as, yeah. as long as we're able to get there at the same time, that's why. Yeah, that's that's sure. what I'm saying. Like okay. the movement, um, yeah. it would like. I put the second army there, but they would technically be right here on their movement. Mm -hmm. So they're in but they the territory. They would engage until we can wait for. Yeah, we army. basically when they okay. get to the area, we would do the journal thing, be like, okay, we're marching, we're gonna be within the main cavern within mm -hmm. like two hours, and mm -hmm. then march kind of thing. Okay, so second army, since you're holding off a little bit. I need someone who is conceivably leading Second Army to give me an intelligence plus stealth check. So use intelligence instead of dexterity. If that makes sense. Okay, so do we have anyone that has proficiency in stealth and decent int? I mean, I think it's just you and Thrum, so if Thrum has yeah. yep. stealth. Yeah. Hold on. So, I mean, that's the difference. I've got three decks so it tells me plus three to stealth but yeah if you're the plus one mm -hmm. <laughs> so i come out to a plus eight bonus so yeah probably you then yeah and it just Wait, to be clear, what do i roll here it is uh i know you're proficient in stealth so it is your intelligence bonus plus your proficiency <laughs> bonus oh then that's only a plus six i mean still you're better than um Taskle. Still yeah. better than my plus one. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so it's this minus one then. All right. Bitches. All right. I'll roll this in front of the board. <coughs> All right. For the time being, you've managed to find concealed position down tunnel from the ruins of Fort Helmingote to keep Second Army's position concealed from the Orcish scouts. Paint a mural of a cave, and we carry that in front of us. <laughs> Pulls out that projector from Mission Impossible. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. And then next week, you guys are going to... Well, I mean... It would be the same week for us to get into Helmingard, wouldn't it? Or I'm just confused because we would have still had movement because both being in Helmingard's area would be three spaces of the four spaces of movement we would have needed. Okay, but either right. way, you guys are see going into the same spot the exact yeah. same time. That's the yeah. yeah. I was just yeah. making sure we, okay. so there's not more raiding happening because we're trying to do this quickly. Yes. Yep. Mm. Uh, all right, so you guys uh, move in on Fort Helm and Goat. 
Let me just do a flat D20 check here. Call the luck check for the orcs. No, okay. So there is one unit of 150 orcs manning the ruins of the fort. I'm not going to take us in the combat because you guys <laughs> will just pulverize them. Now, mm -hmm. We don't need to run. Oh, wow, they ship. really left the skeleton crew here, didn't they? Mm hmm. Uh, and so we don't need to do all the steps. There. <laughs> um, the I'll the luck. We, um... Sorry. I, I was going to say the luck check was to see if they were able to pull out before you got there. Mm. Um, someone give me a survival. Um, I have a plus seven. I think Thrum might you might have higher, but. I don't know. No, plus six. Alas, just Can like Thrum, their pullout game is weak. <laughs> mm, hey, I haven't said anything about children. Mm -hmm. So I rolled a 19, so for a 26, so. Yes, okay. Of course you don't. That's called plausible deniability. So uh, with your scouts, you are able to make sure that none of the routing works. <laughs> It was a qu you were obviously going to kill the entire unit. It was just a question if one or two of them would get away to head towards mm -hmm. the main force or not. But with a 19 on the die, I would definitely say that's you can kill or capture all that you want. Mm -hmm. Now the question is, do we want to just head towards the gem mine and try to um, cut them off in the back and um hit them now while they're while they're distracted with whoever's in the I, I think if we could control this area we're in good shop okay. good the only question is if, if our, as our characters here, we well our characters would we morally move. want to let the everybody in here die while we wait or do we want to try to march well, to save them that, that, that's why i'm saying is I, I say we move here if there's no resistance if they're we haven't seen them yet then we just advance from both directions like basically we march as a unit to here and yep. then if there's no resistance, one goes here, one goes through there. Yep. So, so there's no escape. Yes. And that, or as the that we control the escape route. Yeah. And we're able to attack from multiple directions. I mean, we could try that. We're saying worst yep. comes to worst, we have to back up. So. Mm -hmm. Do we want to um, even out the army so that? Like, didn't you say in those small passages certain troops weren't effective? Uh, the uh, sky sloops are the only one. So if we have to sacrifice our flying infantry, that also means that they're going to have less issue. They're, they're going to have more issues with their dragon riders anyway. So it'll help us in the long run mm -hmm. if they do fight us, try to fight us in the hallways. Because we're better with close quarters anyway. Because they have the yep. numbers, but we have usually more sh stronger units. Do we want to um, rearrange the two groups then so that they're equally strong? Yeah, I mean... I mean, do we want to just throw... Well, 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 um, I, I would say let's get you know here first, and then... Because yeah. moving here will be as a combined unit anyways. Because the only thing I was going to say is when we get if we do divide it, I just want to send one of the Hammer Elite to the other group, and then it'll yeah. be even teams. So Yeah, we could do that. But yeah, we'll keep keep them for now until we decide to split up from this hallway. Mm -hmm. So, all right, new week. Move you guys to where you're gonna be. So, oh, I was trying to move both armies, but I, I don't. I guess you can't do that. There we go. All right. Oh, if you actually oh. back up a little bit there. Yeah. Because it is on the GM layer, but the orc army was actually returning there. This week, oh. so you're gonna meet out in the field. There we go. Yep. All right. So, little man, all those orphans that are gonna be made after that, uh, all their dads are killed in the gem mine. Mm. <laughs> so, we are on the eve of this battle. Going to cut away from the marching of armies. <laughs> we are actually going to go to Dammer Hall with Freya. Uh -oh. uh, 
Freya, you're probably in a, a workshop or an office. I don't know how you occupy your normal day-to-day time. You can tell me if I'm off mark here. Yeah. We can say workshop. Um, and uh, one of your aides comes in. Says, first thing, uh, you'll be having a visitor. Uh, is uh, Lady Tea Leaf. Uh, tell her Fergus isn't here. Uh, she says she's here to speak with you. What the hell? Never talked to this lady in my life. I guess send her in. Mm-hmm. She just needs a gal pal. <laughs> <laughs> Girls' night. New best. You're gonna you're gonna do each other's hair and talk about boys. <laughs> then, then Freya and Ivy will dump her corpse in a ditch. Sever <laughs> <laughs> twelve times in the kidney. I, God, I don't know beautiful. what happened, Fergus. She's just gone. I never spoke with her once. <laughs> Secretly, she has Rasputin powers and comes back as it with a vengeance. <laughs> We have so much lava at our disposal. It's so good for bodies. <laughs> <laughs> there would be so much murder in a society like that. Oh my god. Well, actually, no, because there's a misconception that things sink in lava. They, they no, don't. they they hold out on top. Mm-hmm. Um, lava surprisingly dense. Now, if it was acid. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just thinking of the Rick and Morty. Acid bit, the yeah, the bad ass. <laughs> yes. I fucking love that bit. It might be one of the funnier ones they did on that show. It, sorry, this is a tangent. I I've watched enough actual plays of people doing like World of Darkness or Cyberpunk or Shadowrun or something. I've always wondered why do none of them just have like a bathtub that they fill with acid for body disposal? <laughs> I know it's not quick, but. It seems like something you should have on hand. Because then you end up like Walter and Jesse in Breaking Bad and the bathtub falls from the second floor onto the first floor. That's why you do it in the warehouse and you get stainless steel. Anyway, I'm I'm (laughs) digressing. I don't have a side business. Anyway. What, you think if I was dissolving bodies for the mob, I'd be working at Costco 40 hours a week? I gotta know how to get rid of meth waste. That's why I know. <laughs> the guys at the dump check the pH. They won't let me get, offload it there. <laughs> Listen, it was either this or file serial numbers off of guns. <laughs> Come to think of it, that's probably what I should have done, but I've already invested in the meth trade. Yeah. <laughs> Sunk cost fallacy. <laughs> All right. For real. Okay. What is for real, want? though? Um, so she comes in. Um, she looks a little nervous, not in the something is wrong way, more like in the I'm stepping into someone else's space that I don't know too very well. And I'm not trying to come across like an asshole. She says, uh, thank you for seeing me, Lady Forge Thane. I'm sorry, I'm still learning the titles. Um, as the awkward sound drags on there for a few <laughs> seconds. Um, I just... Uh, I wanted to... talk... on a personal level. Is that okay? Uh, what about... I mean, I don't really know you at all. That is kind of what it is. Um, So years ago, when uh, Fergus and I were together in Corsaconia, the only family that he ever spoke about was his brother and his father, and he never had anything good to say about either of them. And... You're his cousin. I did not know that he had a cousin. I didn't know that he had uncles. 
And now I hear he has a half brother. And Fergus talks to me about some of this stuff, but I'm just, I guess I wanted to know what his family is like. And you're the only one in the city because I guess they're out fighting a war. I'm still processing that. Well, are you wanting to find out anything in particular? I mean, are you guys close or how is it where you come from? I I don't know. This is this is such a different atmosphere. I haven't seen the sun in a couple weeks. I guess I'm just trying to gain some amount of familiarity and if I if I can be completely frank, we haven't talked much, but I kind of get the feeling you don't like me very much. What? No. <laughs> <laughs> that reaction is in character. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I know. I know. I'm probably just being insecure. I'm sorry. Give me. But well, last I knew Fergus, before he head off on this journey, he was he was fencing small stolen goods to a shopkeeper, and now he's a king. So I suppose I'm in the deep end, and I can't feel the bottom with my feet. And she's a gnome or a halfling? Which one? A half- halfling. I remember correctly, halfling. right? Richard. Yes. Hmm? Halfling. All right. I would say, uh, well, our family is descended from the royal family of Dammer Hall, as you much know, but like many of the vast families that once occupied the city, we were estranged after its falling and separated to the uh, separated to the winds, basically. Uh, there was the quest for Dammer Hall, which brought us all back together. She's she's nodding along, listening. Uh, basically, go over how everyone mm. did the Fergus. Uh, Nolgrim, I guess this is. Well, I thought it was more complicated than being his brother, but I guess it's not. This is you're his half brother. Yeah. His, Yep, half brother. Same dad. My father, my father did the nasty in the pasty. Mm-hmm. Technically, a little bit older than Fergus. Mm. It's it's interesting to hear about this whenever Fergus would talk about his family and his heritage before. <laughs> I'm <laughs> oh, sorry. I just saw what you were just putting in the chat. <laughs> sorry, go ahead. <laughs> um, he always speak in very dismissive terms. It definitely seems like the journey changed him some. Fergus acts like he doesn't want. Well, Fergus says he doesn't want to lead, but. It's oftentimes the people who want to lead the least which make the best rulers. That's why I think we've made it so far with him. I suppose that makes sense. So you like uh, clocks? Um, I mean... I'm I mean, sorry. <laughs> so you like jazz? <laughs> um, well, I I mainly did gardening. Surface that that was my hobby. Yeah, that's nice too. <laughs> <laughs> too real. <laughs> <laughs> 
I'm going to do an uh, in front of the board insight check for tea leaf right now on Freya. <laughs> okay. Uh, just roll me a, a deception, even if you're untrained. Uh, Freya. Okay. Deception. One, 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 one. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Two. Close. <laughs> so, uh, what's what's Freya's feelings right now? <laughs> oh, just like intense, mm. uh, awkward, mm. uh, confusion, uh. Who told you what room number I was in? <laughs> <laughs> um, Tell me so I can fire them. <laughs> as, the, as the awkward silence goes on, uh, there's a slight clang of metal as like something in the workshop shifts. You're in a volcano. It happens from time to time. And something, uh, a, cl- a tool goes clang on like a, a, a piece of metal or something. Uh, and she does a little mini jump when she looks over her shoulder. And she goes, oh, sorry, I wasn't trying to uh, seem jumpy. You you probably think it's crazy, but sometimes I swear I'm being followed here. I'm sorry. Elaborate on that. Uh, no, it, it's just it's just a dumb feeling. It's probably just because I'm getting a bit squirrely. No, no, look at me. Look at me. We are at war. Twice. Two, two, two different people were at war with. You are definitely being followed. <laughs> Wretch up that paranoia real quick. Right now, no insight, no intimidation, full beads of sweat. Right <laughs> <laughs> You're not paranoid. Your life is absolutely in danger right now. Yes. Uh, it is just then, as she goes to speak, that uh, a not-so-tiny tremor rips through the ground, and the room shakes as there is a distant boom echoing from somewhere deeper in Dammer Hall, followed by another boom by a larger tremor. Oh, thank God. I mean, duty calls! <laughs> <laughs> Um, you, uh, you head out, you go out of your workshop as you see, uh, guards and, um, various dwarves are running to and fro. Uh, you, you exit the building of workshop at some point when you were running through the halls of your place where you work, uh, Ivy appeared next to you. Uh, and when you reach... Uh, the surface, you are looking out over the, this is the third story of Dammer Hall, where your workshop is, the uh, cityscape of Dammer Hall, um, not too far from where the factory where you fought Bendrak used to be. Uh, and on the other side of the city, uh, it's slightly blocked by stone, but you see a great orange glow followed by tremors and a distinctive roar of a dragon. Oh, shit! Yes, uh, your your plan to uh, uh, stay inside just in case Maldraxxus came was very well thought out, Michael. <laughs> um, uh, Ivy turns to you, Frey, and says, uh, C- Caliburb's not too far away. Should I send a message to him to go get the others? Yes, absolutely. All right. Grab someone. Uh, says instructions to him. Uh, he goes, runs away. All right. Should hopefully get everyone back here soon enough. What do we? Uh, you hear you hear the roaring of flames and the screams of the populace. What 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 do we do? Do we wait or do we try to or do we try to buy time? We've got a. Preoccupy Maladraxis. He could kill too many people while we're waiting for them. All right. Okay, so 
This is how we are going to do this. Roll me a 1d2 plus 1, Michael. Okay. 2 plus 1. 3. All right. So you're going to have to survive three rounds against Maldraxxus with just you and Ivy. No problem. And then everyone will be able to teleport in. Oh, we'll, we'll, we'll adjust them, their scene, when that time comes. But give me a moment to set up the map here. As you're able to get your suit and everything together. Ba -ba 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 -ba. It's go time, baby. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I just, I'm still chuckling about the whole, oh, thank God, the dragon's <laughs> attacking. Yep. I can escape this conversation. <laughs> Up until that moment, the dragon was her biggest fear. <laughs> Trying to remember the dragon did cast spells the last time we used it, right? We fought it, right? Mm -hmm. Nowhere near as um, often as Cephalon did when you fought it with the Mindscape. Cool. Um, racing across the city uh, in your mech suit, IV sitting in the, the gunner seat, I assume, so you can travel faster. Uh, you find upon the north wall, the third story of Dammer Hall, near where the main brewery is, uh, a large chunk of the natural stone wall has been burnt and melted in as a vast magma flow is just gushing out of the wall. Uh, you see small shapes flying about as it appears several fire immune drakes have also followed Maladraxxus in and are now just wild animals loose in the city. Your timely intervention has stopped the chaos from spreading too far. The defenders are trying to contain the situation, but they're caught flat-footed and with lower numbers. But you getting close, you're able to get right up to the breach where Maladraxxus is currently. Much of the city here has already been crumbled and melted down. Islands of stone in a sea of lava. You can smell the burning from here. And the great beating of the dragon's wings. What? Just finishing getting the combat map set up. No problem. All right. Um, yeah. Real quick, instead of using that intellect fortress, I think I'm gonna do protection uh, from energy instead. Yeah, absolutely. Fire, of course. Yeah. Did that target multiple people in this one or no? It targets the willing creature you touch. Gotcha. Yeah. So the suit can count. All right, so you all should be able to see the battle map now. There's no dynamic lighting on this one. The only thing I'll change is that I'll put Ivy in the passenger seat. Mm -hmm. um, you see, perched upon a rock, the titanic form of the great red dragon Maldraxxus, his wings spread wide, no longer confined to the narrow caverns of his treasure room. Where you last met him, uh, how many years? Like seven years ago now. Yeah, seven years ago. His slitted draconic eyes see your suit approaching. Even through that armor, I can smell you, little thief. Think you're proud by coating your suit in gold stolen from my horde. I would say we can send, we can stay here squabbling 
over a conflict that happened seven years ago. Or I can tell you that Encephalon is still alive, and I can prove it to you if you give me the chance. Uh, give me a persuasion. That's not good. <laughs> well, I'll see, though. Mm -hmm. I'm rolling at a plus zero. All right. Fourteen. Uh, the dragon blows uh, smoke out of his nostrils. A pitiful attempt to buy time for your own life. I had my ox give the run around. I thought perhaps you would use that army of yours. It was the only weapon that could save you from me. But it would seem that you're too weak to employ an advantage that was so clearly your own. Tell me of all you learned in your centuries of life of dwarves, Maladraxis. Have you ever known us as deceptive creatures? Ooh, give me another persuasion at advantage uh, before we begin the combat round here. Okay. Persuasion advantage. 14 again! Alright. Yeah, those together, it's 28. <laughs> All right. So, uh, Maldraxxus is going to leap into combat, but I'm going to let you know here, in addition to his normal health bar, there is a secondary health bar, and this will apply to the rest of you when you join combat, too, just so you know. That is, you are successfully managing to persuade him of what you're saying is true. Attacking and damaging him will not lower the persuasion one. Um... And it's very much like um, you guys remember when we did the political stuff to see if Fergus was going to be on the throne or not, where there's a hidden DC. And if you go over it, then the difference of what you roll is added in. So you could use an action to try to reason with the dragon mid combat. Uh, and I will let you know that it is a lower health bar than his main one. Or you can fight him. I'll leave that up to you. But either way, we are going to roll initiative here. And I will let you know Freya has made first blood with the whole uh, convincing him thing. Do you want to roll separately for Ivy? Yeah. Okay. Richard, since you usually do that. Oh, I'm sorry, I, muted. I said, yeah, I'll do that. Just are are persuasion checks an uh, action? Uh, they are an action, but it doesn't always have to be persuasion. Okay, but a skill check to try to convince them is typically considered like, yes. an action. Okay. Yeah, be because no, I, I get it. I just wanted to yeah. make sure. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it makes total sense. That's why I just wanted to clarify. Mm -hmm. All right. So, Ivy will be up first. And keep in mind, it'll it'll be three rounds until we can do a little cutaway scene to have a uh, caliber arrive to the others. So Ivy. Okay. Um, she's on the can the cannon, right? Yes. Yeah. Already started there. Um, does she have um? range to hit this guy? I don't know what the cannon does. That's 125 um, feet. Let me check. Had to be a big combat map for this dragon to fly around. Yeah. It has a range of 120 feet. Can she hold a attack to... Yeah. Um, yeah, as it gets closer to fire upon it. Mm -hmm. That's what she'll do. All right. 
Maldraxxus is going to spread his wings wide, take to the sky. So he will be, let's call it, I'll make it a purple dot so I can remember. After you asked you, Freya, yep. you said you had uh, protection from fire on. Did that also extend to Ivy? Or is it just one target? Um, uh, I think I Ivy has partial concealment from the suit, but I don't think she gets the okay. resistance. Yeah. Okay. I, I wasn't sure if it was one mm -hmm. of those you could target multiple people or not. Okay. Just yeah. curious. Uh, also, don't forget to, because uh, it looks like you're still hurt a little bit from the last fight, don't forget to top off your health there, Michael, for your suit. Because you would have definitely been able to repair it in the ensuing weeks. All right. Uh, so he flies 50 feet into the air. And... Yep, just in range. So he is going to just open up with Dragon's Breath. So... Dexterity saving throw. Dex save coming up. On this suit. Mm -hmm. Okay, but you do have resistance to that 83 damage. Uh, okay. 41. Uh, and Ivy would get her attack too, Richard. Yeah, um, I think uh, Michael has to roll for that since it's, um, he has the attack on his sheet. Yeah, oh, yeah okay. I can do that really quick. I think that's how we were doing it last time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Based on her modifier. Because her attack would be, um, it's based on dexterity, right? Yeah. So it's a plus eight. What's the temporary points we get again? 20? Yes. Um, the two of them would not have it because they wouldn't mm. have been... Right. Mm -hmm. I, I was just buying it. So 20 for like. 19 fours. That is close, but it does miss because dragon. Indeed. Uh, but that is Maldrax's turn. Making it Freya. Yep. Let's Looking at my different options. Okay. So I guess I can't really fly or anything because I want to keep this heat resistance. Um, and most of my stuff is ranged anyway, so I don't need to get close. Um, like if you if you need to move, your suit can still jump, like from here to yeah. here. 15 feet and can't you running long jump what is it like a number of feet equal to your strength score Something like that, yeah yeah so it would be still a part of your normal movement but you should be able to jump 15 feet without needing to cast spells or crap okay let's see if i this would be okay. I'm gonna jump on mm -hmm. over here. 
and I'm going to say uh, you know that if a dwarf really thought this was the end that they would face you down honestly they wouldn't spend their last moments trying to convince you of a falsehood that's a good one I assume you're trying to persuade him or use a skill you're trying to talk him down my point Mm -hmm. yeah Um, that could be a persuasion. Uh, maybe you could, you could argue that's a history. Yeah, let's say history, because I am appealing to Mm -hmm. his previous experience with dwarves. Mm -hmm. 14 a fucking gen. (laughs) Nothing if not consistent. Mm Mm-hmm. All right. 14's all on the board. Anything else? That's a movement in action. All right. Um, Maybe. Using the rogue ability, I'm going to sacrifice movement and bonus action to fire at advantage with this turret. All right. She can't talk to this guy. Mm Mm-hmm. So if Michael clicks the button at advantage... Hey, 23 will hit. That scoreboard. That was from the previous round. Mm -hmm. And we're one of our three rounds in. Yeah, this is the start of the next round, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yep, this is round two. All right. You skipped Ivy. No, she, she, just, she just shot. Oh, sorry. Mm-hmm. Malatraxis. Okay, so he is going to still 50 feet in the air. Fly over there. Keep it to the sky. He is going to use his frightening presence on both Freya and uh, Ivy. So it's a wisdom saving throw from you both. Okay. Doesn't she have certain psionic things that make her immune to this stuff, or no? Uh, she's oh, immune, immune to, to charm. charms. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go. All right. Freya is not frightened, but Ivy is. I will. Oh, yeah. If you flash a genius, automatically succeed. Flash yeah. a genius. Yes. They hold their own. Mm hmm. Freya says, don't get cocky, kid. And that somehow works. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Your turn again, Freya. Bold move. 20 feet, so that should still be within my range mm-hmm. with the suit's strength. I'm going to jump up closer onto mm-hmm. this uh, column here. And I'm going to stay in. Yet I still ask you not to take me at my word, but give me 10 minutes to show you what I'm saying is true. I like it. Uh, what skill row are you thinking for that? Um, maybe investigation because I'm asking him to let me show him the evidence yeah give me an investigation and advantage nice I'm rewarding that good role play there so You are making progress, I'll have you know. All right. Round two. 
Ivy, Draken is overhead. Um, yep, doing the same thing, just firing an advantage against him. So roll that beautiful bean footage. All right. At advantage. Don't think that hits. Yeah, that'll miss. All right. Okie dokie. Um, Maladraxus is going to charge straight down, dropping to only 10 feet over you. And then he is going to make a bite claw and a tail attack against your armor. All right. So bite. Hit. Claw. Hit. Tail. Miss. All right. Bite. 20 piercing, 8 fire. Claw, 14 slashing. All right, it's still up. Oh no! You... Four... Yeah, because you take half that fire. Yeah. Uh, you you the entire suit suit shakes as you feel the draconic might lay into you directly. The growling voice of Maladraxus as his claws as his uh, jaws wrap around the arm of one of your of your suit. Your pitiful attempts to prostrate yourself does not move me, thief. Your own ancestors proclaimed Encephalon dead. You speak of my knowledge of dwarves, but you would not shame yourself, your kind so by making you a liar. It's your turn. Wait, did he just say I was right? No, he he was saying that, according to legend, uh, Durin Trinehammer killed Encephalon, and he was saying that you you must be a liar because why would you shame your own ancestors by saying that it's not the case? He's engaging with you in conversation. Yeah, yes. I'm trying to with roleplay show that while he is not won over, it's like he's not dismissing stuff out of hand. He is engaging yes. in dialogue. Okay. Um. Yeah, but that's what I was kind of saying is that you kind of made my point. Why would I? I mean, you could point that out. Yeah, that, that's, that's, yeah, that's your that, counterpoint. That, yeah. That, yeah, that's your counterpoint. <laughs> yeah. And I say, uh, you make my you make my point exactly, Malatraxis. No dwarf would dishonor their ancestors in such a way, but I am bound by one thing only, and that is the truth. And the truth right. is that he still lives, and we should focus our energies on defeating him and leaving this squabble for later. Uh, I'm going to say that's I, that sounds like feels like an insight to me. Yeah. Insight. Ooh. Oh, nice. Twenty-two. All right. All right, I'm going to save that natural 20. No matter what you say or do on the next one, you'll have advantage on either your next uh, attempt to persuade him or if you just attack him. Either one. Uh, Ivy, at the end of this round, uh, we'll see if the other people appear. So, But it is Ivy's turn now. You blasting him in the face? Sorry, I was muted. Um, I I missed it if he attacked us last turn, or did he just speak? He he attacked. He just okay, attacked he the suit. Gotcha. Is it um, possible for Ivy to like help with the defend action and to impose disadvantage on attacks, or 
I can't no, remember if help or something that's, like that. Yeah, that's that's not how it, that works. Okay. She could okay. she could give Freya advantage on her next attack, but I got not you. not she can't take the dodge action on someone's behalf. Rather than okay. right. um, trying to think of what I could do, like other than just straight up attack him, because give me a second. I mean, you hit him before for twenty damage. He's not no, but I was just trying force. to think of. I was just trying to think of other things, but any sort of debuff you could potentially throw on him or anything like that. She doesn't have any like that. Yeah. She's just pure rogue with some um, psychic powers. She, uh, she could shoot the ceiling and make rocks fall. Give him that everyone does. or something. <laughs> um, I guess she's just gonna shoot at him again with advantage. Um, if it hits, I think he's within range of sneak attack. So. Yep. He's only ten feet over right now. So, advantage attack for Freya for her. Turret, and if it hits, she'll get some sneak attack added to it. That hits. So that'll be 29 points of force damage because sneak adds to whatever the number or whatever type the attack mm-hmm. is. All right. And at the end of Ivy's turn. Aljax is going to use his first legendary action. Uh, He reels his head back and he breathes a gout of flame into the air, which coalesces and twists upon itself um, until it takes weirdly like multi-headed, almost like a hydra made of fire shape. He summons a uh, animated dragon's breath. God, your breath is so stanky, it has its own life. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Then it's Mount Drax's turn. Real quick. All right. He is going to beat his wings and gain some altitude. Uh, if you have a melee attack, you can take an AOO against him if you would like, Freya. All right. He's got dragon scales. He ain't doing a disengage. Yeah. That's a that's a no. <laughs> that's snake eyes. <laughs> All right, uh, and halfway through his movement, before he goes 70 feet in the air, he is going to just take one shot with his tail. 34. 34 will hit. All right. 21 bludgeoning. 21 bludgeoning. All right. Then, for Freya's turn... Oh, I didn't roll the last two turns for my Oh, yeah, go ahead. It's just a d6 each time. Mm -hmm. 12. So, it did actually matter a little bit. I did, did like, half of that. Yep. Uh, The animated threat has to double move to get behind you. Um, I was looking at 34. Yeah, about half. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, and and just help me guys remember this with the animated breath because I will forget it's uh, this ability here, uh, fiery aura at the start of the, each turn, each creature within five feet. It says D six, but I'm just gonna say three to make it quick. Uh, but that it is its turn. All right, you got one last turn, Freya, and then we'll see who appears. Okay. I will Would dispel <laughs> magic work on that creature? Oh, the animated dragon's breath. Um 
I'll just save your roll. It is just an elemental. It's just a creature. It's not a spell. Okay. I'll save you the action and the roll and any concern like that. Ew, he has elemental herpes. He just I mean, spits it out and it just comes back to life. I mean, have you seen Thrum? I mean, he is an elemental herpes. Mm-hmm. Um... Well, I'm not sure what else to fucking say to this guy, honestly. Uh, you can just, you can out of character just give a brief summary of like what you're trying to say, uh, and then we can determine a skill roll. You know, I give advantage for good role play, but if you just want to say, I'm trying to use historical context for why listening to me is a good idea, and then we can do that role. You know, I'm not gonna, not gonna rake you over the coals role play wise. You've been given good stuff so far so you could also tip your hand towards uh, what, you know, what we know of Encephalon's plan mm-hmm. the just that he's once like in the world or reset it or whatever bring about a new world as we know it or that he's using well, party specific. Or something. Mm-hmm. yeah uh I would say, uh, yeah. Uh, and were we all fighting the draw or were we all fighting the orcs? Orcs. Orcs. Okay. Um, I'll say, for we stand here fighting amongst ourselves, and Cephalon gathers an army of drow. Uh, and with those, he plans the complete... Uh, destruction of the world as we know it which the last time I checked includes both of us in it all right what would be uh what do you think would be a good skill for that one I'm, I'm willing to hear arguments um um maybe during like the um, explanation of it he adds some techno jargon and you can use arcana because like he is, he can mention the ritual and stuff. Like when yeah. he's explaining it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because I imagine that comes up in the I just conversation. I don't remember a bunch of that stuff. So if there's stuff yeah. that I'm not mentioning here, just remind me, I guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's why I was mentioning. Like you just explained that he's gonna kill everybody. That would explain why. Yeah. So I'd go more into like the ritual and stuff that they're planning. Yeah. All right, you can give me an arcana. Ooh, nice. Make in progress. Is that everything for your turn? Uh, well, I can't really jump over that way. And, and that was blocked off by the elemental. Yeah, the elemental would get an AOO, but uh, he's well out of AOO range right now. He's 70 feet in the air. Uh, but if that's... Any yeah, return, let's... What's the distance between him and the block beneath Maladraxus? Like 10 feet. Yeah, you can jump there. Like, if you have enough movement, you can jump there and then jump onto this platform, maybe. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I can jump there this round. All right. The animated breath will take a shot at Ivy. I believe she has a plus three AC for partial cover. 12. That's miss. just going to miss yeah. out of hand. All right. So stop the music for just a moment. We are going to cut to the combined dwarf armies. We find you guys, you see the orcish armies spilling forth from the tunnel from where the gem mines were. Uh, Their banners are seen by yours. And they be, are clearly beginning to fan out and mobilize, apparently intent upon a field battle rather than a grinding tunnel-based war of attrition. It does benefit you at least to that you're able to deploy your own sky sloops. 
So it looks like they've replenished their numbers a little bit through natural healing. It is mostly the army that destroyed Fort Helmgoat, including the large dragon-shaped war shrine rolling on wheels. As you are overlooking the battle, it is clear that it is going to be starting in maybe a few minutes. You all gathered up, viewing how you want to organize your formations. There's a sparking of magic. The teleportation spell activates. A frazzled, frail wizard comes out, leaning heavily on his staff, immediately engulfed by a coughing fit. <coughs> uh, Caliburb looks up all you. Eladraxus. He's in Dammer Hall. Freya and Ivy are in battle. <laughs> Go for the leader, and yeah. <laughs> um, we'll are, are, towards them. I, I will say, are any of us staying behind, or are we just leaving the army to contend for themselves? Yeah, because that, that is the question. Yeah. Uh, do um, you leave the army to handle itself? Uh, Caliburb's spell casting is weakened, but uh, he does, he can still fire off another teleport to take you guys back without any issue. Yeah, Mulgrim will want is to go. There... Back to is there, fight Maladraxus. Would it be realistic to retreat the army at this point? I don't like, think so. In the like like, combo of where they're standing. Um, you could, but it's basically just going to be a route. Okay. You'll have to have them just be running full sp- sprint away. Uh, the enemy outriders, like their uh, Drake riders, will probably be able to picking you off at your backs. Mm-hmm. Uh, your our entire army won't be killed, but there will be damage as a consequence. Um, so hear me out, because um, Fergus would probably like say this in character. Like mm-hmm. I'm not sure how he would explain it in character, but we're fighting a dragon that can fly. Thrum, you might serve better here than there. Mm. Yeah, because hey, you can fly away from you. You can get big, but you're the second best thing we have to a military leader. Rum disappears and reappears on the other side of you in his wave uh, watch, mm-hmm. and he goes, well, I disagree with you. This fight is going to happen here, and somebody has to stay to direct him. Even if you guys can convince that dragon to join forces with us, this army isn't going to believe our word for it until they meet back up with him. So, in other words, there's no stopping this orc army. Mm-hmm. And, you know, a thousand dead orcs is a good start, even if they end up being uh, leaving later. So you want to stay behind then? I can. Okay. I was going to say, if, I was just suggesting that because if anyone should stay behind, Thrum is probably the best option. Yeah. Since we're mm. fighting a dragon and he doesn't have really many ranged options. Yeah. Mm. Except for that uh, arcane cannon, he took from that armory, and then he has to give him to Freya. <laughs> <laughs> oh, crap. I forgot I still had... I mean, I can't carry that around on a daily basis. I don't think it was too I mean, huge. I mean, no, you it's... say you can't, but I feel like Thrum would. He would just yeah. carry it like a solar holster. <laughs> Always give it to Freya. She can attach a second one to her suit. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna say I, I have given that to her. Alright, Freya, you got two arcane cannons now. We can soft rep combat back in. <laughs> She's just a Blastoise at this point, isn't she? Pretty much. Blastoise only has two cannons. Yeah, but you have two arcane cannons on your back. Oh, what's that? uh... In the turret. Hmm. I think a Mega Blastoise that has three. (laughs) (laughs) There you go. Yeah, I think he has three. He does. He has one big one and then two side ones. Yeah, on his arms. Yeah. I love that mega though. It's so stupid. Like, you want his Blastoise need more guns. Yeah, definitely okay. a tangent, but they, those were the best ones, were the original starter ones they made. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they were sick. All right. So I was trying to remember the name of the Yu Gi Oh card I was thinking of, 
Uh, it was called Barrel Dragon, which was just a, a mech dragon that had. Oh three guns. yeah, mm-hmm. I fucking but I love. There were multiple of those. But I couldn't remember what it was called, so I just typed in Yu-Gi-Oh Gun Dragon, and there's actually a card called Gun Dragon, and this is what it looks like. Mm. Oh no, what is it? Yeah, you could. I think that's oh, what guns. you got when you used all of them. Is that it? Mm. Yeah, it's just it's a bunch of revolvers on a dragon. Mm-hmm. There were like three different dragon cards. Sorry, this is a oh, niche God. interest. There are like three different of these like gun dragon cards, I think, and they were fucking good too. If you look at the effect, they were kind of sick. Barrel dragon. I remember I had them in my deck. This is this is the upgraded version, Gatling what? dragon. Yeah, I have this. I have that guy too. His head <laughs> is just a Gatling gun. <laughs> Uh, I fucking loved the gun dragons. <laughs> yeah, I don't see how the upgrade is a dragon. That's just like a dude in a wheelchair with three Gatling guns. <laughs> it's a Gatling gun, Hydra. Yeah. Don't oh, you see the, the, the the mouths? The top jaws are the barrel of the gun. Yeah, I did. <laughs> Yeah, the the first one's better, I think. I love that there was a bad guy who was supposed to be canonically American, and the Japanese anime was like, what should his special card be? (laughs) Just a gun. (laughs) Yep. I mean, naturally. God, Julio is fucking funny. Mm Mm-hmm. All right, so everyone except Thrum is teleporting back. I don't want to like force cope. Is Casco going? The mm-hmm. Encounter. I'm just honestly in. trying to decide. Do you want to play Ivy Cope? Uh, no, I'm fine. I'm fine. I, I'm, I'm glad y'all said that because I was going to speak up to say it because his big worry is now y'all can handle the dragon, but we've got all of our men going up against all of the orcs, and that's going to happen. <clears throat> Arthur wants to just slap protection from energy fire on uh, the king and let them all go back, but healing will probably be needed there and here <laughs> and everywhere at all times. Hmm. Yeah, I guess I'll go back. All right. I just as we teleport away, I just look at the room. Try not to do coming volcano again until we're back. No promises. Uh, What's that? I became a volcano while you were talking. What's that? Go volcano. We're fighting <laughs> Maladraxus, and the lava below us just starts <laughs> bubbling, and we're like, "God damn it!" <laughs> it's his Mega Zord. Listen, every fight has to go, Mega. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to tell you what every woman you've ever met has told you. Don't blow your load. <laughs> if you didn't go oh, wow. mega at the end of every fight, then, then you're just rangers. Mm-hmm. And nobody wants to watch rangers. Would would I have time enough to cast a uh, fly on the three of us before we teleport away? Or teleport uh, down? Do you want to give Freya an extra round one on one a dragon? I, I just wasn't sure how what the time frame was, so no, I would yeah. not. All right. So, teleporting with Caliber, you find yourself in the sprawling, lava-strewn ruins, uh, a dragon high in the sky, Freya's suit beat up but still standing, um, upon one of these islets. Uh, Caliber covers himself for a moment. I don't... The Ambrosia has bought me some time, but I don't know how much use I'm going to be at the moment. I can I can try to use my abjuration magic to contain the damage from the rest of the city. That'd be perfect. Do what you need to do. 
And uh, you guys should see your tokens up there. You can go yeah. ahead and roll initiative. We'll be at the top of the round, so we'll just whatever the order will be, will be what it is. All right. Can I be adjacent to them? Sure. Okay. Fergus, you're up first. Oh. Yeah, I'm not going to really want to wait, so... Could I actually, from here, would I be able to see him to shoot at him? Yeah. Yep. He's 70 uh, feet in the air, so... I am going to bonus action stealth. Mm -hmm. See if I can catch him by surprise. 26 against his passive perception. Passive perception. Where is it? Uh, exactly 26. So I'll say that goes to you. Okay, because I am going to attempt a sharpshooter shot. Mm -hmm. And it'll be at advantage. Hornbow time. That's a crit. Oh, oh shit. Um, and in addition, it has a plus 10 to that, all that numbers. All right. So, so I'll just do it one step at a time. Minus 18. Minus 23. Minus another 18. Oh, guys, it was 69 20. damage. Oh, nice. 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 <laughs> That's a good way to start things off. I just, as I shoot him and it probably hits him pretty hard, I'm like, hey, asshole, you're in our house this time. <laughs> and then no uh, from behind he goes, <laughs> That's a sex thing. Because <laughs> he can see visually above Maldrax's head to 69 when you do the thing. I mean, we're operating on MMO rules, right? You can yeah, see the damage yeah. numbers above the, above the <laughs> enemy. Yeah, and when you hit them, they go. Tch. Man, how convenient life would be in real life if you know you're about to get your shit racked by someone in a bar or not? <laughs> right. When you punch them in the chest and just a big zero appears over their head, and you're like, "Oh fuck!" One of my favorite <laughs> debates, discussions online. What is one point? What is one hit point of damage in real life? Uh, but. You still have a second attack, don't you? Yeah, Fergus? I was just waiting for us to shoot the shit real quick before. Yeah, I yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. This Let's... one is not at an advantage, and mm -hmm. that'll probably miss it as a attack. Oh yeah, that'll definitely miss. Yeah, I, um, I didn't want to do sharpshooter unless I had a sneak. Yeah. So. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so you fire one arrow. It, it, you know, we do have a whole tracking shot following the arrow through the air. It phases through his wings as they're beating and hits this him in the side, right in between two scales, like Bard from The Hobbit. You you say your pithy line. Maldrax's head swings around, and thus the prodigal thief shows himself. Just give him a wink as I aim the arrow at him. Uh, anything else for your turn there? Um, not at the moment. I can't imagine I'm going to try to talk shop with them right as soon as I arrive. Yep. Uh, then it's Ivy. Um, I guess just shoot, sacrifice the movements, uh, the action and economy to do an advantage shot against Maldakus. All right. Also, I just forgot, um, if it hits when you have an advantage, even if you're not normally having sneak attack, it would count as sneak attack. Gotcha. So if it, if it hits, it'll get the sneak attack damage on top of it. Okay. I believe it's Michael has to roll it. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah, sorry. I forget. Advantage on this shot. That'll hit. So it that'll be force. 30. All right. Making some progress in this dragon here. Um, out of curiosity, do, um, I guess this would be an in-character ask if, mm -hmm. um, Nolgrim still has that ability to freeze lava for a brief moment. I was already planning on doing that on my turn. Yep. Okay. Well, we'll see. That that we'll it see. worked before, so hopefully it'll work again. Mm hmm All right. Uh, Maldraxxus is going to spend two legendary actions to create a, another 
animated breath right over there. And then it is his turn. Damn it. That dragon breath will not recharge. Uh, but he is going to... Bird. He is going to fly down. That will get him about 10 feet with all of his movement. So he's now 10 feet over you guys. Uh, actually, he's probably like here uh and <laughs> he is just gonna take a bite claw and tail attack against fergus i will use my reaction to impose disadvantage using my protection fighting style yep bite 23 claw 30 tail 26 yep i um going to uncanny dodge the bite to reduce that to half damage all right first up bite 27, so. Claw. Tail. Yeah, it's just the right one. Mm -hmm. Just take a wallop in, and I'm just like, <laughs> that's supposed to scare me? Ugh. Oh. Oh. My vengeance against your greedy little kind has been long in the coming. He's going to rear back, and as a, a bonus action, he's going to give a great bellowing, draconic roar. And breaking off from where they were just kind of randomly attacking the city is going to be a few of these drakes are going to be joining the fray. So I will roll for them now. Six. After Taskal. But that is Maldraxxus' turn. Mm -hmm. Amid Breath is going to move there. Amid Breath is going to move there. All right. So, two slams against Ivy, who has plus three to her AC. One, two. Uh, 21. 21, you said a plus 3, that will hit. Alright. 8 blushing, 11 fire. Um, hold on, sorry. Yep. I just realized I was on the character sheet, not a token, so it's not going to update properly. Gotcha. Uh, and while you're doing that, uh, 2 slams against Taskal. I think we know how this is going to go. Whoop, natural 20! <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's before you started concentrating, it's all good. Yep. Hey, what's our temp hit points now? 16? Don't you have a resistance to fire or immunity yeah, to fire? Yeah. He does, but it's still the, the 15 yeah. bludgeoning. Yeah. Also, I like how you left the guy who was immune to fire behind. <laughs> I know, right? <sighs> but yeah, that daily temporary hitch points things. Yep. It was 20 temporary hit points per, day, right. um, per short rest, so. So five of that, and then half the fire, which is fourteen total. So I've lost two actual hit points. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good lord! Yeah. Clutch thine pearls. All right, uh, but it is your your turn now. It turns out Task was just a big baby. As soon as he takes any damage, he just starts crying. <laughs> just, <laughs> ah, this is what pain uh, is like. Uh, <laughs> How can you guys handle this? Heads up. To that's uh, I can move through no go space, right? Yeah, just can't end it. Okay. I'm going to go over there and uh, start the concentration. Giving, uh, you'd think if you could, up, if you upcast, it would take, uh, it could protect more people, but Fergus is resistant mm -hmm. to fire now for probably until I next get hit. <laughs> mm -hmm. Hey, I'll take it. All right, I can't bonus cast something else, so. Yep. All right. Let's move in action. Oil Belly Drakes. I 
like a passive 10 feet in the air. Oh, yeah, that's right. Thrum also had the axe that does extra damage against dragons. <laughs> mm -hmm. We plan things well. Mm -hmm. So they'll just double move to close in. It's 80. 80. And then these ones will swing low. All right. And at the end of that one, Malagrax is going to use his last legendary action to take a tail attack against Nulgrim. So, tail attack. 20. Got it. My AC is 19. All right. 15 bludgeoning as the tail just whips around and catches you. Right. Uh, but it is now your turn, Nulgrim. Right, I'm going to uh, first activate Oath of Vengeance to get advantage against Maladraxxus. Mm -hmm. And I'll stride. F how far up is he? Is he on ground level at this point? Or? He's 10 feet in the air. So I would not be able to hit him with my melee weapon. Mm -mm. Okay. Um, okay, then he'll proceed to launch into a tirade of your timing could not be worse. We're trying to fend off uh, and Cephalon from ending everything and what the fuck are you doing? And try to intimidate him. All right. Just. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. That makes some progress. Okay. I care not for your shared delusion, dwarfling. First blood is yours, and the last one shall be mine. Short one victory if you, if there's nothing left. But sure, your vanity, by all means. Uh, um, anything else on your turn? Yeah, I think I'll shift forward. Um, do I, t I take damage by starting adjacent to these guys, right? Yeah, three fire. Okay. Well, in the case of Taskle, one. <laughs> yep. And I think that'll be my turn. All right. Freya. Is he muted? He is. Yes. Sorry. Okay. I'm going to... I didn't mean to do that. Okay. Oh, um, I forgot. Two. As oh yeah, I didn't draw my weapon, did I? Okay. Yep. Yeah, sorry, I got lost in order of things. Bonus action. Flame bane. Analyzer. Constitution. Draxus. Gotcha. So he'll have a disadvantage on constitution checks. Mm -hmm. And then I cast Vortex Warp. Oh, okay. Wait, Vortex Warp or Warp? Warp. Warp. Okay. Because okay, that is a bad wart if it has a vortex. Far away, see, he's only 20 feet away. Okay. All right. I don't need so to okay. cast it. Evans, anything above this? All right. I am just 
wanting to teleport him. Where's the ruler? Jesus Christ. Yeah. Basically down this way. Okay. I'll roll his disadvantage con save. His constitution is quite high, so let's see how this goes. 28. Yeah, that beats it. Yeah, he's got a 16. Disadvantage was a good call. Definitely fully possible he could fail that. Without a natural one, I mean. That is the roll. Mm-hmm. Um, they are moving. We'll give an attack for opportunity, so I'm not going to do that. All right. Fergus. Um, so, as he's, like, um, looking at Maldraxxus and him, like, hearing that Nogram pointed out that it's Encephalon is the other guy, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, that he said that um, multiple people lying to him. Mm-hmm. It's like, do you really think we fabricated, fabricated this whole lie just to fool you? We could have, you, are you really so vain that you think our entire time has been devoted to you? You are an issue, but we have bigger issues. You have a common enemy with us that not only is he an enemy with you, from all accounts, he was your biggest rival, and now he has the power of some kind of psychic eldritch god behind him, and you want to fight us currently. That's feeling like a persuasion? Yeah. Uh, I would say get do that at advantage for the role play. Oh, very nice. All right, and then your next attack or your next attempt to socialize him will be at advantage. He still looks like he's wanting to fight currently, right? Yes, but you are definitely making progress. I'll let you. Okay. Does the, the try to convince him take my turn, or I can't remember. It, how it we... takes an action. It's an action. Okay. Uh, because his uh persuade me health bar is significantly smaller than his hit point health bar. Yeah. So if you can do attacks against the bigger health bar as an action, be like, it's fair. No, that's fair. Um, but if he still looks like he's wanting to fight, we can't really just wait for him to be convinced. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and action search so I can swing at him. Yeah, absolutely. As I do, I hold my bow in my left hand and I pull out the axe with my mm-hmm. right. Um, bonus action, I'm going to do insightful fighting against him to make yeah. sure I can get sneak attack on him. So that is mm-hmm. his deception against my insight. All right. Oh, high charisma, no deception proficiency. 23. Okay. So I will He's good, sneak but you're better. <laughs> hey, I'm not going to do sharpshooter because he sees me now. Mm-hmm. But I am going to chuck my axe a couple times. 23. That'll hit. So that'll be 35 points of damage. Mm-hmm. And second one will not have sneak attack. 16 will miss. That I'll miss. That's my turn. All right. At the end of your turn, he is going to use two legendary actions to uh, do a wing attack, beating his wings. Uh, so everyone within 15 feet, which I believe is, will be everyone except for Freya, uh, he's going to do dexterity saving throw, where you get knocked prone and you take some bludgeoning damage. Plus five to anybody that's within 10 feet of Nogrim. I am going to use a superiority die to add a d8 to that. Okay, I will succeed with that plus five and then my mm-hmm. superiority. Uh, Taskal hits the dirt. Looks like Nolgum's going to hit the dirt. Uh, so it's 16 bludgeoning damage and you're knocked prone. And then the dragon then flies half of his speed away. Bless you. And Taskal holds on to the spell. Was muted, but I was, and then I've again forgotten how concentration works. <laughs> how much damage did you say? Uh, 16. All right. All 
All right. Ivy? Um, probably fire at the dragon. All right. So, uh, Michael, if you want an advantage shot again. Gotcha. Oh, yeah, that'll do it. So 23 points of force damage. Nice. Got lots of good hits on this dragon. He is definitely showing the wear and tear. Because you guys were like six levels lower last time you tried this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I could still foresee a world where you guys managed to somehow kill him last time. Mm -hmm. There probably would have been some PC deaths, but... Yeah, and it also depends on our luck on the rolls and shit. Oh, yeah, so. absolutely. Um... Like, if we got really lucky with the rolls, yeah, we could have easily killed him, but mm. that would have required a lot more luck than we have. Yeah. All right. Now Jax's turn. Finally. All right. So he is then going to... Actually, does he actually need to? Oh, no. He doesn't. Okay. So his dragon's breath is a 90-foot cone. Uh, Freya is too spread out, but uh, he is going to hit everyone else. Uh, let me double-check the drakes. Oh, <laughs> that's hilarious. So are the they drakes are res they're resistant to fire. <laughs> the dragon's breath is made of fire, so it's, it's fine. Um, <laughs> I forgot about that, but Maladraxus wouldn't care, so... Um... Dexterity saves are 88 points of fire damage. I shall roll for the drakes. Yeah, that's plus five. Um, I, make, yeah, I make it with the plus five, so I take no damage. Right, because you're broke shit. Oh, wait, no, I don't have that yet, I don't think. Let me double check. I think since I'm multi class, I don't have that. <laughs> so those, those drakes are just straight toast. Um,. I forgot that they weren't immune. That's that's kind of funny. Oh, no, I, I do have it, yeah. So I okay. take no All right. I think I think Task will need a natural twenty to save that spell on him. Hmm. So if you want to roll that task while Maldraxxus flies further away. The breath save? I did. I rolled a nine. Uh, but don't you have con a concentration spell? Yeah, because you just took oh, eight right, points right, of damage. Right. It's even possible at that point. I think natural a natural 20. 20 is really it. Yep. Nope. You would have lost that on a one point of damage. Mm-hmm. I do like the mental image of Maladraxus. He came in when you shot Arrow. He did like a sweeping run with all of his natural attacks, and he just did like a, a big beat of his wings, which pushed half you guys over. And as he was flying backwards, he just blows out his fire breath and coats you guys in it. And Fergus is still somehow inexplicably not taking any damage from any of this shit. <laughs> <laughs> I hid behind Nolgrim. Mm -hmm. you, you know what, Fergus? Just solo him. Just solo him. Yeah. Everyone can go home. You, you go solo the dragon. <laughs> Dark Souls boss mode. Get good. Mm -hmm. uh, so, Taskal will take one point of fire damage at the start of the animated breath's turn. And it is going to maneuver itself to be near as many people as possible. Can I get an attack on it? Oh, no. It's when you leave threatened area in Path 5e. Sorry. Correct. No. They'll make two slams attacks on Fergus. Ooh, duh. Um, uh, yeah, I don't have a reaction, do? so that 22 will hit. All right. Uh, 14 bludgeoning, 11 fire. Uh, you don't have resistance to fire um, anymore. I, I would like to use my... Uh, too late. <laughs> Forgot yeah. to impose the up. No, it's fine. Oh, there'll be more attacks. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Save that for when we're getting attacked by the bigger ones. Yep. Mm hmm Uh, okay. Humiliatingly doing more damage than the dragon's breath. Uh, Tasco. Mm -hmm. 
It's halfway with the stand, isn't it? Yeah. Concentration gone. Yeah, screw it. I'll just attack the uh, the thing I have is bonus fire damage. Yeah. Uh, let's attack the living breath. All right. The highest AC in the world on these. That hits. Probably just the 11 damage. Yep. 11 damage goes through. Yeah. And I'll go ahead and Probably just a second level spiritual weapon. Oh, yeah, that'll hit. Another 12. Beating up the fire. Mm-hmm. Yeah, firefighting. <laughs> Hot. All right. So. Oil belly drakes. I'm gonna fly in a loose V formation. Oh, my token! I wanna. See, do they have range? Aha, they do. They are gonna use their boiling water spit at Freya. So, boiling spit. One, two, three. Does the 20 hit, Michael? No. All right. Lots of burning hot spit coming at you, but nothing capable of doing damage yet. All right. Nulgrim. All right. Standing up. I would... I will draw the grudge blade and activate the uh, freezing effect that will uh, anything within 30 feet uh, well, from the frost blade effect. Yeah. Or frost I know, the one, you're, I know okay. the one you're talking about. Uh, does that solidify some of the lava for me to walk across? Uh, yes. Yeah. We'll say until the top of the or we'll say the end of next round. So after Freya's next turn, after this next one, all the lava will be considered solid. I don't have a fancy graphic this time. Okay, that works, that works. All right. Um, Yeah, then I'll uh, shout out to Maladraxus again and basically say, you know, this is folly. Mm -hmm. The, everything is on the line, but you're still just holding on to his petty grudge. What's rolling? Uh, persuasion. All right. All right. It is progress. And I'll take one point of damage. Mm hmm. And bonus action, I'll lay on hands myself and give me 20 hit points. And that'll be my turn. Wait, let me double check. I want to make sure. I think lay on hands might be a standard action. I might be getting 5th edition mixed in. Or, yeah. Uh, that's fine. Let me double check that. Ah, yeah, it is an action. All right, um, bonus action. I think what I have. Mm. Okay, so I'll just I'll just stay there then. All right. Petty grudge. That is quite a statement coming from you, of all people, dwarf. <laughs> I smell the magic upon your soul. And thus I am the expert, and even I know what is at stake and where priority should lie. 
All right. Freya. Also, don't forget, getting, don't forget your automatic healing, Michael. As yeah. you're... And yes. the ground is no longer lava for a bit longer. Mm-hmm. You said it within 30 feet of you? No, I, well, I'll just do the entire map for it, simplicity. Okay. Plus five. Okay. I'm going to... Uh. Okay. I'm going to how how far away is that from a jump that I can make? You don't have to jump anymore. Oh, uh, the un- un- until the end of the next round, uh, the ground is okay. thrown because I drew the sword. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you can oh, just awesome. run normally. And it's until the end of your next turn that it remains mm-hmm. that way. So strategize oh, yeah. accordingly. Everyone has a chance to use it. Okay. It will get the flame breath will get an attack of opportunity. Is that will that will I be hit by fire if I stand there? Uh no. Uh you're you're okay. good, so I'll just take one shot against Ivy. Sixteen will miss. Uh anything else? And on then your I'll turn say there? Yeah. yeah. I'll look at Maladraxxus and I'll say you have experience. Many of the things you say are true. We're greedy. We're pig-headed and warlike. And I want nothing more than to ensure my name is recorded in the annals of dwarven history than by defeating you or hell, even being defeated by you, Maladraxxus. But that doesn't change the truth. And I learned a long time ago that holding vengeance like you can is just putting blinders over your own eyes. So I ask you one last time for 10 minutes to show it to you, to give you actual proof. If you're unconvinced, then what changes? Very good. Uh, What skill do you want to do for that one? Dealer's choice. Investigation. Investigation. Um, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna full GM Fiat uh triple advantage. So roll once at advantage <laughs> and once at normal, and just take the higher <laughs> of the three. Good role play. Is good role play. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Also, you flattered the dragon. <laughs> <laughs> he likes that. Mm-hmm. Previously established, nonetheless. Yeah. yeah. Don't make me get out my flute. Mm -hmm. 27. All right. So. Progresses him. I will accordingly. I'm going to lower the DC behind the scenes here just a little bit as well. All right. I mean, you could try the flute thing again, but I was going to, he would get advantage for mid combat usage. No, I'm, I'm not going to. I'm not a teacher right now. Anyway. All right. I imagine it's the flute from Mario Bros. <laughs> the warp flute? Man, has anyone done, have you ever heard of anyone do that as like an item of flute that you do a performance check to cast teleportation? <laughs> Oh, that would be cool. I'm sure yeah. someone's made it for a right part at least down. once. That would that would be a good item. I'm, I'm putting that mm. in the mental back the pocket. Flute. Anyone can steal that. <laughs> Someone makes a flute that summons Godzilla. Play that. Play <laughs> the the flute song from the first Power Rangers that he had. Yeah. Mm. Oh, it's Godzilla. 
Uh, that's in your turn, Freya. Yep. Uh, he's gonna spend two legendary actions to make. Oh, I'll make sure I do this right distance away. Yeah, that's good. He's gonna make a third one, but that is now Fergus's turn. Okay. Um, I'm not going to disengage so this guy um, can get an attack on me as I move. Oi. It'll be ending up right here because I'm going to have to bonus action to move further. Ah, natural 20. Take it. Damn. The one time I don't disengage. Mm -hmm. My hubris. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is a very challenging combat encounter, but I was also going in well knowing that I have seen Loki do 120 damage in one hit before. Yeah, so. yeah for sure, for sure. <laughs> and Fergus did one arrow and did 69 points of damage. Mm. So... Uh, you probably still have an action touch, you, Fergus? Yeah, I'm just trying to think of if I'm going to try to say something to him. I'm just trying to, like... Mm -hmm. Brainstorm what I would say. Um. Um. So, yeah, he comes up here and he's like, yells out, um, Madrax, did you really think we didn't know you were coming? You were very obvious with the distracting army of orcs that worship you. If we wanted to lie to you, you think we would have come up with a better lie, and we would have had time to come up with a better lie than the fact that the previously thought dead blue dragon came back to life and can assault people in their dreams to um that wants to envelop the world in some kind of bizarre land that is going to destroy all of us. We could have been instead planning to kill you and lay traps for you when you inevitably showed up. All right, give me a flat persuasion. Okay. Um. And you say that takes an action, right? Yeah. Yeah. So that will be my turn then. All right. Mm. You are merely just making excuses for your own feeble intellects. If this so-called return of Encephalon is so great, then why have you not solved it by turning your dark army upon them, then? He says as we move into Ivy's turn. Mm -hmm. Ivy starts blasting! <laughs> so roll that um, attack, Michael. Advantage. Thank you for reminding me. Bang bang. Ooh, shit. Ooh. Um, I'll just roll sneak attack twice since it's crit. Mm hmm. All right. So that's minus 19, 16. Sometimes it's easier just to do it bit by bit yeah. rather than. No, yeah, you're good. Mentally adding it up. Okay. So he is bloodied. So the persuasion DC is going to go up a little bit as he's slowly getting backed into a corner. Uh, end of Ivy's turn. And Cephalon is going to rush in. There. And he is going to, first up, I forgot to do this, Frightening Presence Fergus. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a failure. Mm -hmm. And then 
bite. Claw tail. Um, I will use my reaction to make the tail attack miss by adding a superiority die. Cool. Okay, so 44 points of damage. He's laying into you, Fergus. I will not so easily overlook my humiliation. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh yeah, we forgot I'm about that. Take, I'm going to take half of it. Oh yeah, nice. Okay, so it was um, 44, so I'll add 22 back. I always forgot about that uh, stone. Yeah, we haven't used it yet, so this is perfect. As bits of uh, Freya's suit detach and fly to form an impromptu shield around Fergus, which take a section of the blow. Mm. Uh, But at the start of the animated Dragon Breath's turn... Uh, three damage to everyone adjacent, so Nilgrim, three, Tascal, three, if you're resistant to fire, you take one. I also got, yeah, resistance to fire. Okay. So it's one that's gonna come behind Fergus. There. This one's gonna come up, keep trying to get Ivy. So, first up, two against Fergus. One, two. Uh, Yeah, those both hit. Ooh, that actually might down me. Hold on a second. Yeah. Yeah, I'm at zero. All right. Then two against Ivy. One, two. 25 will hit. And then one against Taskal, one against Nulgrim. First up, Taskal. 23. All right. And then one against Nulgrim. 15 miss. All right. Taskal. I will let mm-hmm. you know, out of character, that there's a very real possibility if you roll high enough, you might be able to persuade Encephalon with good roll. Non Cephalon, non Jaxus. Fuck. <laughs> First one. Then, yeah. No, this is a, this is Encephal off <laughs> right here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, this is Sloth from the Goonies. Still haven't hey, seen uh, the Goonies. It's a good movie. Yeah. It's that seems like a classic. movie right up your alley, Gamba. Yeah, it probably is. I recently rewatched The Mummy with Brendan Fraser from nineteen ninety nine. Mm-hmm. Fucking mm-hmm. classic movie. That was yep. yeah, so yeah. Good. You would love the Goonies. You need to give it a chance. Yeah, yeah. it is. I, it is funny that like the fat kid is like you look at him now and it's like that's a normal little boy. He has a little bit of baby fat. And they're <laughs> yeah. all making fun of him. <laughs> I mean, truffle shuffle. Fact, baby. That's what kids would do. So. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. But it's also just like how the standards have changed for what's considered a very fat child. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, but it is Taskal's turn. Eh, truly, I don't know if it was the beast, but it claimed to be him. He f- <coughs> posed as our god and sent us on this quest, thus sending us against you. All right. Uh, what skill are you feeling for that one, Kenneth? Well, I want to say insight because I got a plus ten to it, but uh... mm-hmm. <laughs> you're appealing I'll, I'll to honesty. Yeah, you're giving. Yeah, you're, you're, you're giving to the yeah. fact that um, we were you're giving him more against... information and the... mm-hmm. yeah. I, I would allow insight. Do it at advantage. Eighteen. All right. Mm-hmm. 
Okay, that is not high enough to end it, but even without any sort of roll, you can tell behind the draconic eyes that he is beginning to think about it. And by that, I mean he's like within the single digits of what you need to get to persuade him. Mm. Um, mm. Bring it home, Noel because, Grimm, uh, silver tongue. Mm. Because uh, Encephalon did pose as a lizard god for some lizard folk in the past. And it is an MMO, MO that he's used in the past. So, uh, Anything else in your turn there, Taskal? You can still bonus yeah. action attack with a weapon. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, that'll hit. I've been... Chunking away. Boil belly drakes. We're gonna once again try to spit on Freya's suit. Seventeen, nine, fifteen, does seventeen hit? Misses all around. Alright. End of that term, Maldraxus is going to use his last or not last, he just got a his legendary axe is back. Anyway, he's gonna tail attack Freya. Ooh. Well, that's also a bye bye to the suit. <laughs> indeed, it had seven hit points left. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Tail attack swings around, uh, and it just, as sure as a titanic sword, slices the suit. Uh, you're oh, big to... Freya! <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you're able to bail and cling onto the side. Of the uh, the rock, as you see, the lava below you is beginning to reheat as Nulgrim's sword effect is wearing off. But it is Nulgrim's turn. All right. Yeah, further down that hole, the uh, guy what sent us to his lair to get a thing for him was also his Encephalon's kid, wasn't he? Yeah, I think so. Mm-hmm. Does this count on land, or is it too far off to be counting as land? This one right here. Um. Oh, you mean Cap Cap and Hellspit is Encephalon's yeah. kid, and he mm-hmm. has a half sister that's out there somewhere that's also a full dragon. I mean, yep, it's fine if not. I'm just. Looking uh, for we'll say I, I don't think it's gonna count. Okay, not not cut in his land, right? Yep, it's lava. Not his land. Okay, lava. okay. Um, all right, give me one second. No problem. D and D is really just the ultimate form of the floor is lava, isn't it? When it's done right. The floor is dragons. Mm. No, the floor is dungeons. The air is dragons. I mean, you, you guys are just having to desperately cope with the fact that right. um, for once you can't shove someone into the lava. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I'm going to say... If Encephalon didn't wasn't the existential threat that he was. Do you think we'd waste our time arguing with you and trying to convince you of the greater threat? I, I don't think you fully grasp the situation of not only what's on the line, but with your help, you have that. You could... This could be the opportunity to really make a name for yourself by truly defeating Encephalon with our help. Then we could go right back to this rivalry if you want, but until we save all of everything, this fight really needs to wait. All right. Persuasion. Yeah, that feels like a persuasion. You can have it at an advantage. 28. Let's see here. I'm pretty sure. Yep. That clinches it. Puts it at 120. All right. Encephalon slams into the rock. Um, his clawed hand resting just over where Fergus's unconscious body is. He gives a snort and blows a gout of flame, which instantly disintegrates the drakes in the air. (laughs) And he says, 
Fine. Ten minutes. Show me your proof. And uh, I'm, I need to take a bio, but that will end the mm. encounter there. Would no be able to just right. rush over and uh, lay on yeah, hands, Fergus? Yeah, you can lay on go. hands, Fergus. All right. Um, 20 hit points so back, Fergus. I'll be right back. So don't don't get into role play yet. <laughs> yep. Yep. I'm just going to yeah talk about what I'm thinking. Uh, what I'm thinking right now to prove it is we've got that stone that contacts the drow guy. We could engage him in conversation and get him to drop Encephalon, or we could drop Encephalon on him, confirm it implicitly. That's my idea right now. That's thing out of my pocket. Mm. Basically, say something like. Mine, could we uh, bring over a caliber and see if the wizard who is as much in the know as anybody. He might even have some magical tricks up his sleeve. Share memory or some something, something like that. Maybe. I know, I know we established share memory isn't a thing in 5e, unfortunately. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Unfortunately. But still, he is the one that lived with, you know, or at least knows of the greater threat or at least what he's and Cephalon's trying to do. But if you guys could help me think of a line of questioning, it'd be cool. Mm. I'm trying to think. Like we could be like... <sighs> um, well, after... Is there a world after uh, Encephalon's plan? Something like that? Um... I'm trying to think of other things we can mention, but I know there's the. Um, he's probably been down here long enough. You could probably have heard from his minions about people missing their brains, um, mm. probably more often, more recently. And um, trying to think of anything else we can mention. Um, yeah, we. I say we leave with any proof, and then we can try calling that guy. I mean, do we? I guess, yeah. I mean, do we go so far as to mention also the thing in you know, my chest what, what that... ritual he knows, to, or basically where he's headed to, and things at the end core of the world? I mean, might as well, because you know we're trying to get him on our side, and we're gonna have to have him come with us to fucking deal with it anyway, or at least help us in some way. Um. We could mention about the thing that's in my chest that, you know, was put there by a minion of his. Um, exerting mental control over it. Um, yeah, yeah, I mentioned my, my, the city. Me mentioned the city that he was in. Mentioned he's been assaulting people through dreams and um, influencing the world through psychic intervention. Yeah, we can ask him if he's had any weird dreams involving Cephalon. Or really anything. Um, I think as far as... I could have sworn we had something that we could use as proof. I thought we had something. Yeah, but my best best idea right now, uh, because Gamma just got back, is uh, calling up that uh, drow mechanist guy. Um, and what you say? Follower, follower, follower of Encephalon says what? And just wait for him to say what? <laughs> no. So, I mean, we can. Yeah, role play. You guys can. Want, you guys can. Just tell me when you guys are ready to get into roleplay. I don't mind if you out-of-character strategize the argument here. Because uh, this is kind of a pivotal thing. If you can get an ancient red dragon, at least temporarily on your side. So I'm going to run it hardcore. But at the same time, you guys can take a minute to out-of-characters workshop a thought. So, yeah, we, we kind of just did that while you were gone. Our idea right now is they're going to lead in with the with the sort of circumstantial evidence that we have 
mm-hmm. the thing in Fergus' heart that was left there. Ask him if he's had any weird dreams. Explain that he's been exerting influence over dreams. Ask him if his, any of his minions have gone mysteriously missing or don't have brain or like, shown up with missing brains. brains. Yeah, mm-hmm. something like that. They all have no brains. They're orcs. Anyways. <laughs> Maybe even have, like I said, have Caliber just kind of give his testimony because he's <laughs> his psyche has finally knitted together for the most part after all that. And then, as a final piece of more concrete evidence, calling up uh, the drow mechanist guy and basically getting him to admit to it through a line of questioning. Mm-hmm. And- implicitly basically you know but what the questioning i have in that right now is basically you know i i've been pondering uh the end of all things and still haven't quite been able to figure out is there a world after encephalon's plan does he plan to persist on is this some sort of self-destructive or prophetic uh Ritual is it a cycle in which uh, creatures like this go from world to world? I don't know. That's yeah. my idea right now. Basically, asking him a question where because I basically did that the last time, he didn't seem to have any problem. <laughs> basically, implicitly admitting Encephalon exists. Dude likes to to monologue. Yeah, so let him monologue basically into admitting Encephalon exists. That's my idea right now. All right, so, Fergus, you regain consciousness as uh, Nilgrim lay on hands as you do. Uh, You're all on a little island in a slowly cooling lava river. A titanic, ancient red dragon looming over you, wings still spread wide, waiting to hear your argument. Um, I mean, damn, I think we just kind of talked about, like, we would start with, the, you know, mm-hmm. explaining what we know about him, about how um, the adventuring group had discovered the city of, I can't remember the name of right now, but my character would remember the name. Yeah, the, the city of uh, Tir Amaruk. Yeah. Um, about how they went there and uncovered a, what was it, like a sealed gate of some kind? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And upon opening it, um, were assaulted from otherworldly um, abominations that before they were able to seal it, it got into the brains of mm-hmm. the leader of not only the dwarves, but also the drow. Mm-hmm. Um, and then corrupted them, led them into doing what he, he wanted, Somehow in the process also revived in Cephalon. Um, and it's deep in the um, cave systems um, about how his minions have started proactively working towards um, um, getting us out of the way to further his goals. You know, mentioned about the how one of them stuck a psychic metal in my chest. Mm-hmm. And then talk about how um, we discovered this through him trying to steal information from a wizard's brain after we, we unknowingly went there. We we have a sample of the metal, don't we? The yeah, we have a sample of, was, of the metal because yeah. mm-hmm. we shot it out of me. That's mm-hmm. what I was thinking of when we had a yeah. semi-proof that something happened. Mm-hmm. All right, so this is how I think I'm going to do it. Um, we're going to have three skill rolls that you guys can divide amongst yourselves however you want. We are going to have a persuasion. We are going to have an arcana. And then I think we are going to have, let's call it an insight. Uh, if you get two of the three, this is going to be a higher DC than what you had when you are in combat with him. Uh, then you will succeed and move forward. Uh, those are going to be three rolls, but you guys can spread it amongst the four of you however you see fit. No help actions, though. Mm. Damn, I was just about to ask that. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. My persuasion is a plus 14, so I probably yeah. have that on luck. Yeah, you get persuasion. Um, how's your insight? My, my uh, insight is um, 12. Arcana mm-hmm. is a 6, so I imagine that probably will be Freya. Yeah. I, my Arcana is a 10. And then my insight is a minus one, so that probably <laughs> my insight's uh, a two. Tasco. I don't know what Tasco's scores are. Ten for insight and everything else. Is okay. Yep. Well, that works out. Freaking Fergus at having the highest bonuses on all the skills. <laughs> I mean, have you seen Rose. how many skills I have? You have like, all I have of mine less. Now. I have le- I have more skills than I don't have skills. Mm-hmm. Ironically, as a rogue, I don't have sight of hand. I don't have Arcana or Religion. I don't have Athletics or Animal Handling. And I don't have Intimidation or Medicine, but I have everything else. <laughs> anyway, so Persuasion. 28. All right. That succeeds. Insight, 29. Okay, that succeeds. Let's see if you can go for the hat trick with, uh, an, with the, Arcana. Uh, the Arcana. All right. I'm a very good speaker when I'm not actually speaking succeed. with my own voice. All right, so the Arcana does not succeed, but you needed at least two of them to succeed. Mm-hmm. So after, it is longer than ten minutes, but after a good long while of explaining this to Encephalon, he stews on it for a moment. Still looming over you, but you do notice that his wings tuck in just a little bit more. Nostrils flare. You feel the heat radiating off of them, the smell of sulfur. And what assurances are you willing to give me for this alliance? Call it collateral. Now this is the time where we think out of character. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. What could we offer him? I know exactly what to offer him. Hmm. Uh, the mountaintops. Doubt you consider that viable. Well. No. I'll tell you what, with a persuasion, he will. <laughs> but if there's consequences for that, you might have to deal with that later. <laughs> Let's like, keep that as a plan, like D. Let's see what else we think, <laughs> we think of. And Cope, I know Thrum isn't here, but you can feel free to spitball in here too. I kind of feel bad because you've just been quiet the entire session. No, it's it's been perfect because I felt like shit today and was real sick. Oh. So this is oh. letting me like have a mental release of listening to y'all, but at the same time I don't have to put forth any effort. Okay, good. I, I'm glad. So don't feel bad. Quick, one of you offer the firstborn child of yours. <laughs> Freya, I've got it. You can have Fergus's fiance. <laughs> <laughs> hey, don't give don't give Freya any ideas. Fun fact, out of character, that would work. <laughs> 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 Kidnapping a princess is totally on brand for the dragon. <laughs> Does Freya have any interest in the golem schematics that she was given? I mean that that could be a Precious treasure in the right perspective. True, but is that collateral? Mm. Uh, I don't know. My best idea is the mountaintops. Mm. Look, if he complains about it later, then we'll just persuade him later. But the thing is, he's not going to be absurd right now. And maybe when he's cooled off, he'll be easier to sweat. You still have a stockpile of weapons. Dwarven craft, you know. (laughs) Why do I I want to give him shit that we actually want to keep? 
Well, that's kind of the point of collateral, though. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, it's absurd he's asking for us, us for collateral right now, considering that he's half dead. But he's a, he's a but he's asking for collateral to make sure that we're actually on the level about this whole thing. Yeah, he's a, he's a lawful evil greedy giant lizard who you stole from in the past. So mm. it's if nothing else, it's a pride move. Yeah. Um. Like I get, I have an idea for Fergus. Like, I mean, he seems like the, the type to want something sentimental just to rub in your face. Mm -hmm. I could offer him my bow. Yeah, I'd have to just get a new one. What about the helmet? There's the helmet that um, Nolgrim has. You said, I think. Mm. I, I think mean, I, I, I gave that over to Freya. Mm -hmm. Oh, the Forge Friend helmet. Yeah. Mm. Uh, you could offer him that plate armor that I stole from his horde. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not upset him. <laughs> I'm still take that. To not restart the fight. <laughs> <laughs> I, I could lend him the grudge blade and just summon it to myself at any time. <laughs> <laughs> No. Um, we can offer really him the scale bane. Yeah, no, pissing off track. <laughs> yeah, we yeah, we no. can tell him that when um, Thrum comes back, we can offer him the scale bane, a weapon that was specifically designed to kill him to mean that we don't really mean to hurt him after we're done with this. Yeah, it's a very symbolic um, offering. And he could even uh, okay. use it against Encephalon. <laughs> I'll make my pitch one last time. What is the dwarfiest way to make a deal with a dragon? Methinks immediately trying to scam him by giving him the worst piece of land we can imagine. <laughs> and also, like, all that other shit is, like, actual shit we want to keep. And this guy's a fucking bum. Fucking bum. I could offer him that flute that put him to sleep that one time as a way to pay back. Oh, that, that might make him that would, that would probably work, actually. Yeah. That would, that would work. Yeah. Um, yeah. If we think that's a good idea, I could mm -hmm. pull it out because I still yeah, have it on I'm me. I'm up for that. Mm -hmm. I was really I, just suggesting the mountaintop because everything else sounded like it wasn't going to work, but that sounds like it'll mm -hmm. work. So yeah, I pull out that fruit flute that I carved back in the elven um, forests, mm -hmm. and while you and I just look up, I'm like, while you may not have fond memories of it, I handcrafted this and enchant um, and through doing so, it enchanted. And you know the the music is good, and I hold it holds a special place in my heart um, as a uh, means of collateral. I could offer it to you. Uh, he is down real low, turning his head to the side to get a good close look at it. You're right in front of his giant orange eyeball, which is almost as big as your entire body. Mentally thinking, I swear to God, I thought their dragons had human forms. Couldn't you just do this and that? Why to base itself? <laughs> <laughs> um, I see the magics of the forest spirits upon this. I remember it well. Yes, this will do. He pulls his head back. A uh, large draconic claw comes towards you, turns over, and opens up for you to set the hand. food on. Yeah. Takes it and clutches it close. Very well. Consider this an alliance of convenience. I shall retain this treasure till we can be assured that you are not deceiving me about my rival returning. I shall return... Oh, oh, go ahead. I was going to ask him, like, by chance do you know of, insert city name here? The name is not unknown to me, but its location I have never found due to lack of interest. If you would find it, I would recommend discussing with Delgar. It is their city, after all. I shall return to my lair 
and draw back my armies. Uh, we, we very well may need him in the days ahead to stop Encephalon. <laughs> Meanwhile, Throm is like, no survivors! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Indeed. Even among blue scales, he is a megalomaniacal and melodramatic one. There's no doubt he has attained a menagerie when fortune is that he wishes to pit against us. But rest assured, greedy little dwarven thieves, you have appeased me for this moment, so your victory shall be assured. And unless you have anything else, he is going to take flight and smash back through the giant lava hole he made in the wall to get inside Dammer Hall. Uh, Man, before he leaves, mm -hmm. I will ask uh, by what way he wishes to be contacted when the day comes to go to war. I shall send an emissary from my minions fit to speak on my behalf. He will have ways to contact me. And should Encephalon arrive on our front before yours? I shall be near. He's just going to be sleeping in our volcano. <laughs> <laughs> Some say you can steal here the Red Dragon story. <laughs> I shall not miss battle with my nemesis, provided you are not lying. I wish that we were. <laughs> with that, he shall withdraw. He makes no effort to rein in the, uh, rein in the wild drakes that came through with him. Uh, but their uh, numbers are not so extreme that the dwarven defenders are not able to do something about it. Mm -hmm. Um... It's just general clamor and disarray. But the good news is, since uh, Freya got stuck in, you guys are not going to take any stress from any of that. So I'm going to go take a nap. <laughs> Fergus, go talk to your girlfriend or whatever she is. Tell her not wait, to come wait, back to my to office. <laughs> Don't tell her that. <laughs> wait, and he's like, wait, were you rude to her? Get back here! And he's just, like, yelling for <laughs> Mm. Cordial. Uh, um, do we have any way to send him? Oh, yeah, the book, right? We could write to. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, uh, he might be in the middle of battle right now. Yeah, we're we right. probably won't get to it this yeah. session because we're in the last hour, and also Throm is under. Uh, Cope is under the weather, but they are definitely in full warfare right now. <laughs> right. I, I just thought, uh, wasn't it like each round of combat military style was minutes? Yeah, but it's it's not. And, like and we did take can, ten minutes to do proof and all that stuff. So yeah, yeah. Also, so it, I, it, 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 it sounds not like, like Caliber might not be able to send us back. Well, yeah. That's, what I was gonna say is like we should still take the hour to heal regardless. Oh yeah. We wouldn't be useful here. Mm -hmm. But Helen Goat may be destroyed, but there's still probably some architecture left there. I could probably teleport to, couldn't there be? Oh, absolutely. So uh, I could still bring us to that area. Yeah. yeah. But I'm just saying, even if you do use the notebook and Thrum gets it. It's not like he can just hold up a hand in the middle of the melee going, yeah, hold on, yeah. hold on, guys, time out, time out. I'm getting a text. Uh, hold on. Well, yeah, I just wasn't sure if, like, Maladrax has had a similar way to message his people, well, with the shards of him in them. Oh, we'll see. All right, we'll find out. Every one of his minions, yes, eat my shard. <laughs> mm -hmm. Flash the cope. Uh, um... Yep. I, I liked the social uh, health bar. The only thing, yeah. if we're out of game, I don't know, are we still... We, we could still do it sounded more, like we didn't open to feedback whenever. Yeah, is it... It kind of felt like I ran through all my arguments and bashing my head against the wall. Yeah, the, that's why and I it, was trying to say, like, the role play we could give advantage, yeah. but you could always just say, yeah. I, I'm just going to lean on them. Yeah. And it... My pro it funnels all of the good arguments towards the front and not mm -hmm. towards 
when it's I don't have a problem with it, but it's not it doesn't funnel the arguments towards convincing him. Yeah. The, the worst arguments I think we made were the ones near yeah. the end. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. It I was just trying to experiment with something yeah. because I I, I, like I the didn't idea. Want, I didn't yeah. want it to just be you do one persuasion check and you instantly convert him. Um, I, 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 do, you know, I do like that. Shouting while yeah. you're fighting. I thought was cool. Mm. Just giving it a yeah. shot. Yeah, no, I appreciate it for sure. I like yeah. it. I, I just offer the feedback in case there's any way you can mm-hmm. figure yeah, out. There, there's some way that I can like fine so tune it, it, I'm so. sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that you end up funneling the better arguments towards the end of the persuasion. Yeah. You, you could even, I don't know. Maybe that's just something for me to keep in mind next time we do something like this. As he leaves. Yeah, yeah, like, it, it I wonder if be... his flesh is self cooking. <laughs> I mean, it could also be on us to kind of set up the case before we ran the fine points home, right? Mm-hmm. Just kind yeah. of throw out there. By the way, Encephalon's trying the world. <laughs> you know, it's like, okay, gonna need more than that, right? Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, that, there is a world, not just in 5th edition, but just in tabletop games in general, where having a lawyer-esque debate could be just as impactful as combat. You just need right. to, you just need to think about it a little bit more. And I've, that's one of those game design things I've been trying to mentally crack the code of. Um, the scream objection. Mm. Like, uh, it's not super impactful for this, uh, but like one of the coolest things that I thought was a night idea from the newest edition of Vampire the Masquerade, because they have their own social combat system, where they explain that your weapons, which gives you damage bonuses, are who is listening to the argument. So doing it in front of a massive crowd is like the equivalent of bringing a bazooka because public humiliation is bad. <laughs> nice. I'm like, that, that's a good way of thinking about it, actually. Mm. Um. Excuse me, everyone. My opponent here is a big bitch. <laughs> what is this? It does sound like an amazing gladiatory weapon. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Well, because um, it's it's less about persuading the other person, and that one is more about making them lose face in a social setting, because um, it's politics, and everyone's petty bitches in the vampire world. <laughs> All right, so... Yes, vampires are not a metaphor for anything! <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, I don't want to get too down that rabbit hole because we have a little time left. But um, so, a medium-sized neighborhood of Dammer Hall has been kind of destroyed, but no actual kingdom actions or stress damage needed to offset that. So we're not doing actions right now, but just so you know, going into the future, you don't have to worry about it. Yep. I know. I'm a hero. <laughs> <laughs> Nearly got brought down with a suit before they all got there, though. Mm. Good thing you had the tank. Mm. So, tell me, Gambo, what's the mm. only hit point that matters? The last hit point, obviously. It's the last one. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> I know that from playing Gork. <laughs> <laughs> so... What does everyone do just post dragon battle? Get away from <sighs> the fire and start bandaging up. <laughs> I'm gonna go take a nap. <laughs> I, yeah, all of a sudden, I think of it like, God damn it, my food's gone. I can't take a cat nap anymore. <laughs> Jumps into the lava to get it back from the dragon. <laughs> get back here with my food. Call take backsies. <laughs> take me. It wasn't dead. worth it. I instantly regret. <laughs> I don't want to have to give you something that I want. <laughs> That's <laughs> That's the entire point of collateral. Well, exactly. Look, we didn't mention it, but there's this whole top of our mountain. 
<laughs> Would he have taken that? Uh, I was going to have a persuasion, but it was definitely going to be possible. Mm-hmm. Now, when the cloud if, giants get pissed off, <laughs> maybe. And if they did, that would be like one year later, while you're still trying to deal with the Encephalon problem. Yeah. Hey, so you didn't mention the fucking rocks from the sky, dipshit. <laughs> <laughs> you're hey, a dragon. Those aren't going to bother you. You didn't yeah. ask about them. Hmm. Listen, that bastard probably eats rocks. I don't think he's going to really be that upset. If you want a different piece of collateral, then... I want a different piece of collateral. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, too bad. We're four levels <laughs> stronger now. We're going to kick your ass. <laughs> you absolutely have to take the top of the mountain. <laughs> There's no take back. You already have it. It's yours now. Deal with it. Uh... That's going to stick in my head for a while now, though. The explosion from within Nehmer Hall and Freya's reaction is, oh, thank God, I can leave the conversation. (laughs) (laughs) That was pretty good, Michael. (laughs) If we want, we probably call it here and just kind of bullshit for a while, because it seems like anything we're going to do, like, in character-wise is going to be, like, more involved than Cope's prepared for. I do have a general... Uh, out of character question for you, Richard, that still pertains yeah. to this game. Yeah, um, that's fine. So, this is not going to have any role or any mechanical impact, just me for my own clarity. Uh, how would you describe how things are going between Fergus and Marigold Tea Leaf right now? Um, I feel like it's one of those things, like, they both clearly want to try to make things work. Yes. But they're like they're both like I imagine she didn't just stay stagnant. She's probably a different person from what he remembers. Mm-hmm. And you know, he's clearly very different from what she remembers. Yeah. Um, and they're still trying to make he it work. Definitely you can definitely tell there's like some the tension there, I'm sure. Mm-hmm. Like you can never go back to what was once there. Yeah. And it's like it's like that thing where they're trying to determine do they want to continue or do they want mm-hmm. to leave on a good note still? Yeah, it's like it's like one of those to be determined still. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, you know, Freya being like the way she is towards her, towards her is probably not helping matters. Yeah, and Freya shortly after the dragon encounter does discover that in her free time Ivy has been tailing her, and that's what that was. <laughs> oh, I one hundred percent knew exactly what would happen there. Yeah, I just love that Freya fed right into the. Oh yeah, you're absolutely in danger. <laughs> You're absolutely being followed. <laughs> you need to run right now. Go away. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Are we not going to acknowledge he's probably being followed? Yes, by you had a, you have one paranoid person come up to another paranoid person and tell them about <laughs> their paranoid delusions. <laughs> no, no. It it sounds like you're being gang stalked. Yeah, no. The red cars. No, I see it. Yeah, yeah. No, they were they were looking at you. <laughs> yeah but like uh my, my plan for marigold tea leaf richard is that i'm not really gonna tell you how that relationship goes you're a dm you can tell me how you want that to evolve and i'm just yeah. gonna control all the stuff around it like marigold talking to your family and getting <laughs> weird vibes yeah no i feel like it's more on like the downswing than an upswing at the moment but mm-hmm. it's still like they're still working on it to see because, you know, yeah. he hasn't really exactly been able to take the time and spend time with her because mm-hmm. there's been a war. Yep. Like, I think she arrived right when there was a war going on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the, the exact things were you were in Caliburb's tower and the yep. guard said the building that the king was in just exploded. He'll be with <laughs> you shortly. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> That's a hell is this a thing. common occurrence well it's a new one but not that odd mm-hmm. I mean his uncle can literally turn into a mountain so uh, yeah. I would rate that a 7 out of 10 in the flashiness mm. from my experience <laughs> <laughs> Um, this is, this is actually a pretty interesting idea because since we kind of do a sea of time thing for a little bit um, this could easily be like a before session question but since we're bullshitting a little bit with the last time that we have here anyway, 
um, during some of the time skips that we had during kingdom management. Uh, no, we don't have to do role play scene saying, has anyone else talked with Marigold Tea Leaf in that time? Nogram would have. Yeah, Nogram, yeah. if if he did get any sort of downtime, he probably would have had some. Um, yeah. Yeah, he would have invited her to, you know, mm. some meal and just talk and get to know her and help her <laughs> at least feel comfortable in the area. Yeah. Um, would she have wanted to talk to us? Uh, I mean, she's kind of actively starting to seek out now mm -hmm. but like if you bump in if you said you know out of character like a dm you bump into mm -hmm. her in a hallway or something she doesn't avoid you guys or anything like that yeah. i mean no nogram would be mm -hmm. you know nogram would know that she was at least at one point in time yeah. special to fergus so he wants mm -hmm. to make her feel comfortable and welcome and just not mm -hmm. alienated yeah like, I, I was pretty confident that Freya was not having that discussion. Well, <laughs> right. Freya's on Team Ivy. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> uh, definitely the opposite. Mm -hmm. Middle Finger. If she had bumped into Middle Finger, Middle Finger would have had a total different G view. <laughs> Give yep. him the uh, trademark salute. <laughs> <laughs> she, uh... He would have. Uh, his amazing You're pretty role. skinny for a dwarf girl, don't you think? <laughs> Political scheming. He would have said, uh, 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 "Fergus has definitely grown into his duties. He's uh, beyond our expectations. His, his performance has been that like that of the stalactite that has grown away from the ceiling further and further." It's far away from where his roots began. Plant um, that seed of doubt in that woman's head. Mm -hmm. Speaking of, that's another thing. Um, since since Nogrum's always trying to change the name of the Council of Idiots, mm -hmm. um, Co uh, Cubs called the middle finger. It could literally just be the fist of the Empire if we ever need. I like it. I like it. And he's the middle finger. Really, really yeah. good. <laughs> I love it. That's really good. I like it. Of course you like it. You've been trying to change it forever. Well, but especially since it leans into your nickname, especially. I, mm. I'd, I'd be okay with most stuff, but I love that it ties into just the lore that we're continuing to build. Mm. All right. Well, what does that make me? The <laughs> fucking pinky? Pinky in gonna, the brain? One of us has to. One of I mean, I feel, I feel like Pinky is your suit and you're the brain. <laughs> <laughs> I actually like that a lot. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, I, I was playing the brain. <laughs> I was playing. Uh, let me make a DM note here. All right, work in a fisting joke. All right. Oh, God. <laughs> so the council of idiots have renamed themselves. They are now known for their fisting. <laughs> All right, who who's the ring finger? Because. Ring lore is very easy to bring into this. Mm -hmm. uh, his like ring of spirits. Well, well, I think we have more people than five, so the index and all that stuff probably won't work. But well, I just figured with the, the middle finger, you know? Well, obviously, yeah. Ivy wouldn't be a finger because she's the master of spies, so she'd yeah. be the invisible finger. Yeah. Nogram <laughs> would be the thumb I, uh, that squishes you. I could see the I, fourth end being the thumb. I was playing FTL, and uh, I had like my boarding crew who were this was, who was a human and one of those rock guys. I forget what they're called, but they're made entirely out of rock and they're immune to fire. Mm -hmm. And I didn't realize their names until later. But then I looked over and I realized that my two enforcers, their names were Fish, the rock guy. His name was Fish, and the human's name was Stick. Those were their <laughs> generated names. I did not name them that. That's awesome. Do you like fish sticks? If I ever, <laughs> I'm just saying, if I ever run like a Starfinder or sci-fi campaign, fish and stick are gonna be in that. That was fucking <laughs> hilarious. <laughs> having having my two muscle guys be a human and a rock guy named Fish and Stick. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, we we can probably stop the recording now because we're going into full bullshit mode. But <laughs> yeah, good session though. Yeah. Big dragon. Hell, I might fucking I might play fish and stick. <laughs> <laughs>